Good morning and welcome to Bible Baptist Church. What a great song to start with today. What if it were today? That should be the prayer of every one of God's people. As the Apostle John said, even so come, Lord Jesus. But in the meantime, it is right to be here right now. And we're glad that you have joined us. We're going to sing together. And the first one we have today is one I'm excited about. It's one of my favorites, Victory in Jesus. So sing it out with all your heart. Sing together on verse number one now. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save us. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his Standing on the 
promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong Lord, overcoming daily by the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, Christ arose because he arose. We know that we shall live with him also. So let's sing all three verses. Wonderful song. Sing it out now with all your heart. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus songs that we have just sung, and I trust that we have poured our very heart into them. Father, we stand on the promises of your word today in this present life. Father, we understand the true victory that we have not in ourselves, but victory in Jesus, understanding that truth is because we serve a risen Savior, Christ arose. We, as God's children, are a triumphant people. Father, there are those who will watch. There will those who will be here in person in these services today who do not know Christ as their Savior. Oh, they might even think that they do. Or they might have a complete understanding that they do not know the Lord. They might be confused. They might have doubts. They might have questions. Father, I pray that today the Word of God would cut through every bit of doubt and confusion in the one who does not know Christ's heart. They would have a clear understanding of where they stand and what they need.
and that today is the day of salvation. For believers, Father, may we not live with our heads hung down in shame and in defeat, but our heads held high yet in humility because you are the one who's done it all and that we live in victory today. May this be a blessed day of church today. It's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen. Hello, friends. I have just a few announcements for you today. Can you believe Bible Baptist Church has been reopened now for almost a month? And we're doing it right. So if you're one of those that haven't decided to come back to church yet, now's a great time. We're, we're still in phase one, which means we have two preaching services, one at 9 o'clock for folks that are 65 years and older. And then we have one at 11 o'clock. It's for all ages, and that hour includes child care. So if you haven't made that decision yet, now's a good time. Please come back home. Would you like your child to get a good Christian education? You know, I did. I sure wanted mine to. And all five of my kids attended Bible Baptist Christian Academy. And I'd highly recommend that yours do too. Call 760-955-7353 for more information how your child can get enrolled too. Now, Father's Day is coming up. It's just a week away. It's June 21st. Pastor has a very special gift, a book he purchased for each father that will be in attendance. Now remember, it's a big day here. We have a community-wide blood drive right after the preaching. It's inside the gymnasium. Now remember, the live stream is putting on a, a barbecue, but it's really, you know how you used to get candy and orange juice? Well, now you get a hamburger or a hot dog. If you participate, they're going to feed you well. And by the way, did you ever think you had COVID-19? Maybe back in December or November, if you uh, do a blood test, they're actually checking to see if you have antibodies, basically if you've had it before. So it's a good time to come and, and be part of the activities next Sunday. And lastly, I know we all want to stay faithful with our tithe. And you know, Bible Baptist Church has made it simple. There's a push pay app online. If you could, just go check it out and get familiar with it and see if it works for you. That's all the announcements for now. Have a great Sunday.
was once an old lumberjack who went looking for a job. And when he got to the job site, he saw the foreman, and he was carrying his old axe, and this old man came to the foreman and said, I'd like a job fell on the trees out here with the other workers that you got. And that foreman said, sir, he said, I don't think you're up to this work. This is heavy work. Look at the trees out there that need to be felled. He said, I'm not sure you can do it. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll work one day for free. You don't have to pay me a thing, no matter how well or her ba how bad I do. But however I do, you decide if you can keep me or not. Well, the foreman thought I have nothing to lose, I suppose. He said, go ahead. He went out there and that lumberjack worked like a house of fire. He was felling trees left and white. The man was more machine than he was human. It was incredible. Well, he went back to the office late in the day and the foreman said, sir, he said, that was incredible. And lumberjack said, well, can I have the job? And he said, well, one more thing. Let me talk more about you. He said, from what I can see, it looks great. And he said, but, but tell me, where did you get this experience? He said, you can have the job, but... He said, I want you more than working to train these fellows. He said, where'd you get the experience? And old Lumberjack said, well, I've been all over the place. He said, I've worked all over the world. He said, well, tell me one place. He said, well, he said, uh, I worked the Sahara Forest before. And the foreman stopped and said, no, 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 sir. He said, he said, Sahara Forest? He said, yeah, he said that. He said, don't you mean Sahara Desert? And old Lumberjack looked back at him. He said, well, I guess that's what they called it before I showed up. See, I want you to open your Bible today to Psalm 119. And I want us today to become like that old lumberjack, Sahara Forest, Sahara Desert. To be a person who uses and utilizes the strength of the Word of God to the greatest of their abilities. To be like that old lumberjack who by reason of experience and reason of use takes this wonderful book, lives their lives by it, as we just heard, to be used of God. We've been in this series now for a couple of weeks, ever since we came back in person. And we've been in this series, you remember the book of Acts, this same Jesus. Last week, Romans chapter 11, to whom be glory forever. Now we come and we think of the blessed word of God, that which does not change. But today, that which does not change has the power to change us to impact, to influence our lives. And really today, this is one message split in two parts. It's really a two-part message. You need this morning and you need tonight. You need to come back online, all of us. Whether you saw this in person or online, you need to, you need to come back tonight at 6 o'clock online, all of us together, to get the second part of this message. But in Psalm 119, read with me verse number 89. Forever, I want you to think about that in this space and the thought of time. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, the one whom we need, the one whom we need to rely upon in this hour, in a constantly changing world, to stand firm upon the rock, to be steady in giving our lives glory unto you, and to be determined to build our lives upon the truth of the Word of God. So, Father, we ask desperately, needfully, for your help today, in this hour and in this time. It is truly an exciting time to be alive. But, Father, it's an important time to be alive. And I pray that we would give ourselves wholly unto you and wholly unto the importance of of this message today that lasts from this morning through this evening's message as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, look at verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Consider that word with me, if you will, right there towards the end of the verse, settled. But then I want you to think of something. There's another verse that we're going to come to later on in the message that speaks of the word of God being active. How is something settled, and that word means exactly what you'd think it means, it means to be settled, to be put in its place and unchanging, unalterable. But how is something that is settled, as we'll see later, something that is also active, only the Word of God? It is a miracle work of God. You see this Bible that I hold in my hand that others will have with them in person and you have with you online. This Word is, is a book like no other book. 
It truly is a miracle book given to us by God himself. And it is both settled and it is active. But let's look at that word settled. To be set. To, to not be movable in a way you could put it. There are several things I want you to see, just one after another. And I want to represent the very first thought about this word. Looking at verse number 89, look at that first set of words. We today would use it as one word. In your Bible, it's to forever. Forever. How long is that? Well, there's, it's, it's more than a long time. It's, it's time to the infinity. Forever in the past, forever to the future. Why? Because a book that I would pick up, a book that I would study in my office, had a writer who is finite, who is human, who had a date of birth, and if they've passed already, a date of death, or if they're living one day, that they will die, whether it's 60 years or 70 years or 80 years, or however long it is. You see, the, the words of a book come from the mind of the author. Well, if we think of the Word of God, it's thy word. Thy word means the word of God is connected, obviously, to God himself. In fact, Christ, the Bible says, is the word, capital W. So it is forever. It is as old as God himself, and it is forever in the distance as God will ever be. But think of it in manners of this term. I have in my possession a gift from Mrs. Linda Cooper. Linda, I know that you've been watching online, and I'm glad that you are, and I'm praying for you. And for all those who, for health reasons, need to be online right now. I have this old Bible. I have this Bible. I want you to know something. It's the same Bible. This Bible right here I purchased a couple months ago online. It's the easiest way to do it now. And uh, I save up. I pay cash for it online. I do it. And uh, I pay for it that way, and I get it. And about every four or five years, I have a Bible that's completely worn out, and the Hinges, not the hinges, but the uh, binding begins to come apart, and I need to get a new one. So I've had this Bible in my possession now for about three months, and I'm wearing it in. I work on wearing it in. It used to be when I was a boy, I'd take a baseball mitt and I'd work it in. Now I take a new Bible and I work it in, and I like for it to be soft. I like for it just to hold open. But then I have this Bible. This Bible I hold delicately. It was purchased by a man named Joseph Peters in 1857 in New York City. I don't know who he is. I've tried to look him up, tried to find out about him. But it was purchased 1857. That's getting to be a long time ago. Much older than this printed copy of the Bible. But I tell all of you that whether it's this Bible that I'll put here on the edge of the pulpit or if this Bible here, it's still the same Word of God. Though it's 160 years or so different in printing, it's still the internal, eternal, infallible, inerrant Word of God. Those who would have held this Bible, Mr. Peters, whose name is inscribed in it, though I don't know him, when he or his family member would have opened the pages of this Bible, it is still as powerful as true. Time does not change it. Well, we live in a different time. Uh, it's kind of become a little bit of a running joke within our family. Every commercial that comes on, or about one out of every two commercials, will say, in these uncertain times. It seems we hear that uh, quite often anymore. They are different times, but you know, the times don't change God's Word. God's Word still stands. I think also with a settled Word, look down with me in the passage, Psalm 119. Go with me to verse number 96, and I want you to see this. In that portion, verse 96 says, I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. And when this is in this portion, no length of time is going to change God's word. And listen now, no event changes God's word. No event will ever change it. Nothing that has ever happened that was expected or unexpected. I can remember just a few days before all of this hit, that now we're beginning to come back and the time when we had to make decisions about whether we'd have in-person services or not, and as a church trying to get online, and a wonderful attitude our church has had toward that, and I'm so thankful. I ask you to continue that, and that's, that's by the strength and the leadership of the Lord. Keep depending upon Him. It was literally just three days before things started to close. I was at a restaurant after a Sunday night service, with several preachers having a meal, 
got a call and asked if I'd like to meet up. And a group of us preachers met up and had a meal. No one, no one in that whole group had any thought that we'd have these circumstances right now. Not one of us. No one was talking about what we'd be doing, not just now, but the next Sunday. There was no thought to that at that point in time. Everything changed. Events changed so quickly. But I want you to know something. God's Word has never changed. The Word itself, subs of itself, it is exceeding broad, which indicates it covers everything. There's nothing that's missed. There's no event that would happen for which God would say, boy, I didn't cover that in the Word of God. I didn't cover that in my Word. No power of man can change it. Look at verse number 95. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. There's no power of man that's ever going to alter the word of God. We live in a day where things just kind of go as the wind blows. We, we, what is popular one day is no longer popular. We live in a bandwagon day. Everyone jumps on this, this bandwagon. This is the way to go and this is the way to do it. You think in the Word of God, the Bible often refers to itself as the law, especially here in Psalm 119. You think with me for just a moment. You think about Congress for just a moment. What's the House or the Senate, the legislatures the, throughout the states or through the national uh, arena? How many laws do they pass? How many laws are there that you've never even heard of? How many things do they pass? Why? Because men are constantly changing, but God's word is settled. God doesn't need to go as the wind blows. God's law is eternal. Think of something else, not only even events, not time, not a person, not the work of man, but no circumstance diminishes the effectiveness of the Bible. Look at verse number 94. And I want you to notice these three words. I am thine. You see, I can say that this particular copy of the Bible that I have, it belongs to me, I might say. This suit belongs to me. Why? It's been purchased. That's why we would use that. Well, think of something, Christian. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the blood-bought child of God. You are purchased. You belong to to him. I am thine, the psalmist wrote. The child of God belongs to God. I want to ask you this. Is God, it is a simple question, is God bigger than your circumstance? The answer is yes. Is God bigger than your circumstance? Is the, is the way of God greater than your circumstance? And the answer to that is yes. I would say this as well. Nothing can ever replace the word of God. Look at verse 92. It says, Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in my afflictions. You see, the law was his delight. You know, the word delight there means exactly what we would think it means, exactly as we use it today. It means delight, to delight in something. In the Counts family, we have something that we call a delight. Mrs. Counts, my mother, Mrs. Counts make something called a strawberry delight. You say those words around Russell and Becky and Joel and something happens to us. It takes us back home. It's called delight and it tastes delightful. It's incredible. It's angel food cake and strawberries and whipped cream. I guess the strawberries might be good for you, but very little bit about it is good for you. But boy, it tastes good. And it is exactly what it is. How much more, how much more is the word of God to your life? Yet sadly, we're living in a day where Christians seek delight in every other thing but God's Word. We're, we're, we're kind of like, a, a, we can be like children with a new toy. We get excited about this, and then we get excited about this, we get excited about this, and God's Word has never changed. It's been there. But we come to a place in our lives where we realize it is God's Word in which we get our delight from, our joy is found in, and now watch this, verse number 93, and it's going to move us from settled to active. Stay with me now. Look at verse number 93. It says, I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. The word quicken means to be made alive, to be given life. 
You see, the Bible itself, it is settled in that it is life-given. Why? Because it says the Word of God is given by inspiration, means God breathed. In Him was life. That life was the light of men. The Bible would say that forever, 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 Thy Word, O Lord, is settled. It is firm. It is something upon which I can stand where I can be that will not be altered. But times in our life, there will be situations that will come that remind us of a certain pilot who was flying out in the blue skies. Yet as he was flying his plane, he came across a cloud and he thought nothing of it. It looked relatively small and he thought, I'll just go right through it. I'll be in it at one side and out the other and no problem at all. Well, when he entered the cloud, he discovered that cloud was much larger than he thought when he was approaching it. As he went into the cloud, he began to get disoriented. And his mind was telling him he was upside down. But the instrument said, you're right side up. His mind was telling him that he was descending too quickly. But the instrument was telling him he was right on course. His mind would tell him that the plane was slowing down and the engine would stall. But the instrument said that everything was fine. In that moment, that pilot had to make a decision. Do I trust myself or do I trust the instrument on the plane? Well, he trusted the instrument and he came out the other side and he discovered my mind was wrong and the instruments were right all along. How true that is in our lives, the precious Word of God. That the circumstances of our life can say, everything is wrong. In my mind, everything is upside down. And God's word says, no, everything's right side up. I'm still in control. Who are you going to trust? Your mind that says it's upside down or my word that says that God is still right side up? Everything says we're we're just descending. Everything's going to go down. And God, who says, trust me, The instrument of my word says, I will forever stand. And so while we look at that word settled, I want you to see that the instrument of the word of God is still moving and active. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12, a verse like Psalm 119, 89, that every Christian, every Christian ought to know. Watch this, verse number 12. For the word of God is quick. Notice back in Psalm 119 that the Word had quickened him, made him alive. Why? Because the Word of God itself is alive. Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. Those three words I want us to see because then it shows the effect of it. Then any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Discerner of the thoughts and intents, listen to this now. The Word of God knows you. That's why when I read His Word, it knows me and it begins to point things out to me that I need, that I need to depend on, that I need to turn from. Why? Because the Word knows me. It's a discerner. Why? Because the Word works in conjunction with the Spirit of God to show me what I need in my life. But it's because of those three words, quick and powerful and sharper That word quick means that the Word of God, think of this. Is God alive? Is He eternal? Is there anything, is there anything that will ever, that will ever cause God Himself to cease? God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, watch this. The Word of God is quick. It's alive. Because the Bible itself is as alive as God is. Whether it's this Bible printed a few months ago or this Bible printed 160 some odd years ago, it is the truth that holds that this Bible is just as alive because it is the Word of God as this Bible ever will be because it is as alive as God is in your life. Then the word powerful means active, or effective. It is alive as God is, but it is more active than anything we know of. It is more active 
than anything that we know of. This word is life-changing. This word is life-impacting. And If there is something that I want to learn from those who've come before me, is that they have learned of the great power, of the value, of dependence on the word of God. Yet how often we have decided we're going to depend on the thoughts of man. Haven't we yet learned that the thoughts of man change? We already spoke of that in the Psalms. We're here today and saying it's, it's as active, it's as effective as anything ever could be. Why? It is the living, eternal Word of God, and it needs to be given space. But I ask you this, on a practical level, to every question, when, when was the last time, other than a church service, that you opened your Bible, that you got into it, that you studied it, that you listened to it, that you, that you asked the Lord to enlighten you into His Word? You're troubled today? Get into the Word of God. The Word of God alleviates your trouble. You're burdened today? Get into the Word of God, and the Word of God will lift you to the heights of the promises of God. Why? Because it is more active than anything that we would know of. It is more effective in His work than anything that man can do. Haven't we learned yet? Haven't we learned that the news today is old news tomorrow? Haven't we learned that what man would say in maybe all sincerity can be totally obsolete in a week? Yet the Word of God is as powerful today as it ever was. Why? Because it is eternal. It is settled yet active. And then it says it is sharper. It's sharper. It is absolute in His work. Once in a while, if you commute any distance or if you're going to make a trip, you'll do one of two things, if not both. You'll check a traffic report before you leave on the radio, on TV. You'll look it up on your phone. Or you'll put in the GPS on your device before you get in the car. Many of us do that. I do that sometimes on the simplest trips just to get there as fast as I can. Well, that GPS or that traffic report is governed by something that is above whatever situation there may be, and has a better view of what I have sitting in my driveway on my way out. I can think, I can, I can have an idea of what the best way is if there would be no traffic, but I depend on a source that is higher than I. The Bible says that it's sharper. It's cutting. It cuts through all the confusion. Why? Because the Word of God is a source that is higher than I will ever be and it sits above all and it looks down and it provides me the direction, the direction that I need in my life. So as we come to the close of the first part of this message, and tonight is going to be a very practical, practical message from our study on It's Our Turn in 2 Timothy that's going to put this truth into action. Because our response ought to be more, yeah, more than, yeah, I believe it. I know it. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. We can know it. But I want to ask you, are we living it? We can know that it's quick and powerful and sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. But tonight, I want you to see the response. How then do we live according to the word of God? So this morning, the power of the word, it is settled it is active. There is none other like unto it. Tonight, its way is sure. And I want you to be here. Heavenly Father, I come to the close of this service online right now. And I pray for all of those that will hear this message in person at 9 or in person at 11, out on car radios, even on CDs in many cases, for those who have no other avenue of attending church, for those online. That more than a name... Bible Baptist Church, that, Father, we would truly be people of the Word. That more than words on a page, forever, O Lord, thy Word is settled in heaven, and a thought of an obsolete book. May we understand that it's alive, it's active, and it's purposeful in our lives. And so, Father, I pray. I pray for those who have grown cold to the Word of God, those through this time of uncertainty who have neglected the Bible. Father, for those who have grown cold, may the fire and the embers of that fire be warmed by the delight of the Word of God.
Father, there are things that do not change. You will never change. For us to give glory unto you ought never to change because you are the all-glorious one. And Father, the fact that your word is forever settled will never change. So Father, in a time like this, may we more than ever lean, rely, depend completely and totally upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Trust you've been blessed by the service. Be back tonight, part two. One message kind of divided right in half. We will look for you tonight at 6 o'clock. Join us again real soon.